Okie dokie, as we move on to chapter 11, cardiovascular system. The class might seem like it's going real fast, but you've learned quite a bit already. Um, so today we're going to name the parts of the heart and associated blood vessels and their functions, trace the pathway of blood through the heart. Might feel like a human anatomy class, right? Uh, Luckily, you don't have to go as uh, uh, detailed as an anatomy class um, to find the combining forms that relate to the cardiovascular system. That's the key. All right, the cardiovascular system delivers oxygen and nutrients to cells of body tissue. The heart, of course, is the muscular pump and the blood vessels fuel line and transportation network. Um, one of the types of uh, blood vessels, you have arteries, veins, and capillaries. So arteries are vessels that lead away. I always think A, away from the heart. Veins have thinner walls than arteries and move deoxygenated blood toward the heart from the tissues. And capillaries are the smallest vessels. They form the point of exchange for oxygen and nutrients into the body cells and waste products. Okay, so capillaries uh, join the arteries and veins together. So remember arteries A, away, veins, toward. So if you look at the artery, it's very muscular, right? So it pumps, it's got, it's pressurized. So if you were to cut an artery or sever an artery, the blood is going to be bright red and it's going to be like saw five all over. Okay, so it's pressurized, it's going to squirt out, there's a lot of pressure, bright red. If you sever a vein, um, it's just going to be dark, purplish, and just kind of oozes out. Okay, so then you know the difference between uh, artery and vein. In horror movies, they always like to sever the artery. And But from a medical standpoint, if somebody has a ruptured artery, or that is much more dangerous, and they have very little time to live if you don't get help right away, especially the carotid or the femoral artery. Brachial is another big artery. Okay, so the femoral, the brachial, and the carotid are big arteries that if they have damage to that, they have minutes to live. If you understand the basic flow uh, uh, of the heart and the cardiovascular system, it's a very important. So what you want to do is you want to understand that deoxygenated, so oxygen poor blood has to go to the heart. It shows up in the inferior and superior vena cavus. They go to the right atrium. Then from the right atrium, it goes to the right ventricle and the left ventricle will pump that deoxygenated blood into the lungs and its job the lungs to oxygenate the blood then you get oxygen rich so nice bright red blood coming to the left atrium then it'll go into the left ventricle and the left ventricle is a lot larger than the right and that's going to pump blood all the way from the aorta all the way into your body. So that's the basic idea of the pump. Again, if you were in anatomy, I'd have you memorize all the valves and everything there is to know, but the, you should have a basic idea of how the heart and the cardiovascular system work. And arteries, uh, if you look at that, you know, you have the arch of the aorta, the ascending aorta, you have the thoracic aorta, abdominal aorta, then you have the big femoral artery, posterior tib, okay? So if you look at this, you have the superior vena cava, inferior vena cava. So those bring deoxygenated blood into the right atrium. Then it goes to the tricuspid valve. Then it goes to the right ventricle. Then it goes into the pulmonary valve, pulmonary artery. So this is interesting. I always say arteries are away, right? And arteries carry oxygenated blood. But in the heart, the pulmonary artery, which is going away from the heart, actually has deoxygenated blood. That's the tricky one in the heart or in the body because then pulmonary veins are bringing back oxygenated blood. So it's the opposite. Uh, um, so when it's the opposite, it's always a little tricky. Then it goes to the left atrium, then the mitral valve, then the left ventricle, and that's the thickest and the aortic valve, and then the aorta. The tricuspid valve, uh, cusp are like little uh, uh, flasps, flaps between the atrium and the ventricle. The pulmonary valve between the 
right ventricle and pulmonary artery. The mitral valve is between the left atrium and left ventricle, and the aortic valve is between the left atrium and aorta. So your heartbeat, you know, the lub dub, lub dub, lub dub, is actually closing of these valves, okay? It's not opening, it's actually the closing that makes the lub and the dub. All right, in anatomy I'd have you memorize what those are, but just know that the closing of the valves is what causes that lub-dub, lub-dub. And when you go to the doctor and they're using a stethoscope, they're actually listening to see if they do close a lub-dub, lub-dub. There could be a lub-sh-dub, or a lub-sh-sh-dub, or a lub-lub-dub. <laughs> it just depends on the sound, and that's what they're looking for. Uh, so again, this is a good little uh, pathway that shows, okay, superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, um, that is deoxygenated blood, is coming to the right atrium, then goes to the tricuspid valve, then it goes to the right ventricle, and look at that, the pulmonary artery still has blue or deoxygenated blood, then the lung capillaries, uh, the CO2 is exhaled and the O2 is inhaled, so then all of a sudden you have oxygenated blood. Pulmonary vein brings it to the left atrium, then the mitral valve, left ventricle pushes it through the aortic valve and the aorta. So if you can memorize that little uh, uh, chart, you have the cardiovascular system down. Now, two phases of the heartbeat. Uh, there's diastole, which is a relaxation, and systole, which is a contraction. The diastole, systole, cardiac cycle, occurs between 70 to 80 times per minute, 100 times per day. The heart pumps three ounces of blood with each contraction. This means that five quarts are pumped per minute, 75 gallons are an hour, and 2,000 gallons of blood are pumped every single day. Now, again, like we mentioned, the closures of the valves associated with that sounds lub, dub, lub, dub. Lub is the closure of the tricuspid and mitral valves at the beginning of systole, and the dub is the closure of the aortic and pulmonary valves at the end of systole. A murmur is an abnormal heart sound caused by improper valve closure. Phases of the heartbeat, okay, diastole, systole, diastole, systole. Now, the SA node is the pacemaker of the heart. The pacemaker is the origin of electrical impulse causing walls of the atria to contract and force blood into the ventricles. The AV node, this sends the excitation wave to a bundle of specialized fibers called the AV bundle of Hiss. The bundle of Hiss, pronounced Hiss, helps form conduction myofibers that extend to ventricle walls and simulate them to contract beginning with systole a short rest period follows again you don't have to know the details of the EKG I'm just kind of introducing you to this this is way beyond the scope of this class to know what it, uh, trying to read an EKG uh, just need to know what an EKG is or ECG or EKG is electrocardiogram uh, the record used to detect electrical changes in the heart muscle as the heart beats so again, this is a very typical uh, EKG on the P wave, spread of excitation wave over the atria just before contraction. The QRS wave, spread of excitation over the ventricle as the ventricles contract. And the T wave, the electric recovery and relaxation of the ventricles. A heart attack, myocardial, can be recognized by an elevation of this ST segment in the ECG. Thus, one type of MI is the ST elevation. Okay, so that would, that's probably the extent of what you need to know there. Okay, there's the ST segment. And now blood pressure, you probably had your blood pressure taken. The force that the blood exerts on the arterial walls measured using the sphygmonometer. Okay, sphygmonometer. Expressed as a fraction, systolic, diastolic, 120 over 80. So we're going to look at the vocabulary words now. Aorta, apex of the heart, arterial, or an artery. So the aorta this is the largest artery in the body. Apex of the heart is the lower tip of the heart. 
Arterial is a small artery. Artery is the largest type of blood vessel, carries blood away from the heart to all parts of the body. The AV bundle, bundle hiss, AV node, and the atrium. So the atrioventricle bundle, bundle of hiss, uh, specialized muscle fibers connecting the atria with the ventricles and transmitting electrical impulses between them. The AV node, specialized tissue in the wall between atria, electrical impulses pass from the pacemaker through AV node and bundle of hiss toward the ventricles. Atrium, one of two upper chambers of the heart. Capillary, carbon dioxide, coronary arteries, and deoxygenated blood. A capillary is the smallest blood vessel. Uh, carbon dioxide is waste gas released by body cells transported via veins to the heart and then to lungs for exhalation. Coronary arteries are blood vessels that branch from the aorta and carry oxygen-rich blood to the heart. Deoxygenated blood is oxygen-poor blood. Diastole, electrogram, endocardium, and endothelium. Diastole is the relaxation phase of the heartbeat. Electrocardiogram is the record electricity flowing through the heart. Endocardium is the inner lining, so you can get endocarditis, so inflammation of that lining. Endothelium is the innermost lining of blood vessels. Mitral valve, murmur, myocardium, normal sinus rhythm. The mitral valve is the valve between the left atrium and left ventricle, also known as the bicuspid valve or the left AV valve. So it has three names. Uh, sometimes if there's a defect, you might hear a murmur. A lot of people have that. It's nothing uh, uh, life-threatening, um, but if it gets too bad, then they might have to do surgery. Murmur, abnormal swishing sound caused by improper closure of the heart valves. So that's why I was telling you, you get a lub dub shh, lub dub shh. Myocardium, muscular, middle layer of the heart, normal sinus rhythm, heart rhythm, or draining an SA node with resting rate of 60 to 100 beats. Oxygen, pacemaker, SA node, uh, pericardium, and the pulmonary artery. Oxygen is gas carried by blood from the lungs to the heart to be pumped via arteries to all body cells. Pacemaker, SA node, specialized nervous tissue in the right atrium that begins the heartbeat. Pericardium, double layered membrane surrounding the heart. And pulmonary artery is artery carrying oxygen poor blood from the heart to the lungs. All right, again, oxygen is gas carried by the blood from the lungs to the heart to be pumped via arteries to all body cells. The pacemaker, specialized nervous tissue in the right atrium that begins the heartbeat. Pericardium, double layered membrane surrounding the heart. And the pulmonary artery is artery carrying oxygen poor blood from the heart and lungs. Might have heard that already. Pulmonary circulation, pulmonary valve, and pulmonary vein. Pulmonary circulation is flow of blood from the heart to the lungs and back to the heart. Pulmonary valve, valve position between the right ventricle and pulmonary artery. Pulmonary vein carries oxygenated blood from the lungs to the left atrium to the heart. Pulse, septum, SA node. Pulse is the beat of the heart as felt through the walls of the arteries. Septum. A partition or wall dividing a cavity such as that between the right and left atria and right and left ventricles. SA node is the pacemaker of the heart. It's a good quiz question. Sphygmomanometer. <laughs> it's a hard word. Sphygmomanometer. <laughs> Systemic circulation, systole, tricuspid valve. Um, sphygmomanometer, <laughs> instrument to measure blood pressure. Systemic circulation, flow of blood from body tissue to heart and back. Systole, the contraction phase of the heartbeat. The tricuspid valve is located between the right atrium and right ventricle. So the tricuspid has three leaflets and the bicuspid valve has two. And then a valve and a vein. So a valve is a structure in veins or in the heart that temporarily closes an opening so blood flows only in one direction. Um, as you get older, these valves get weaker so you can get varicose veins. A uh, vein is a thin wall structure that carries blood from body tissues and lungs back to the heart. It contains valves to prevent the backflow of blood. Vena cava, ventricle, and venule. 
the vena cava, uh, whether it's superior or inferior, is the largest vein in the body. Superior and inferior cava return blood to the right atrium. Ventricle is one or two lower chambers of the heart. The left is larger than the right, and the venule is a small vein.